perhaps the most startling of the recent discoveries in Egypt has been made at Nabta Playa. The Nabta Playa stone circle lies in the middle of a particularly harsh and foreboding part of the Sahara Desert. Although it had been thoroughly catalogued and meticulously measured, it would be many years later before the complex astrophysical function of this mysterious site would be discovered. Astrophysicist Thomas Brophy discusses this revolutionary discovery in his book, The Origin Map, discovery of a prehistoric megalithic astrophysical map and sculpture of the universe. It's becoming clear in the new sub-science or sub-discipline of archaeoastronomy that sophisticated astronomical knowledge existed in very, very ancient times, beginning with a book called Hamlet's Mill, published in 1968 by MIT historians of science, Giorgio de Santillana and Hertha von Deckand. It was found that extremely sophisticated astronomy was coded into the mythologies and legends of very ancient peoples. Perhaps most significant is that the ancients recognized and employed what is called a procession of the equinoxes in their myths, in their legends, and in their constructions. In the hands of Thomas Brophy, a physicist and archaeoastronomer, we see that Nabta Playa is not just oriented to the solstices, which would already tell us that there was a fairly sophisticated astronomy in place, but rather that it encodes astronomical information so sophisticated that it's only in the past couple of decades that our own astronomy has been able to provide us with this kind of information. These crude stones, some of them in the form of a circle and others in outlying megaliths, other stones buried in the silts, still other pieces of carved bedrock, in Brophy's analysis become a kind of living planetarium, a stone observatory in which these ancient Egyptians could keep track of the movements of the heavens over periods of thousands of years. We met Mr. Brophy near his home in Encinitas, California to demonstrate his findings. Okay, we're looking at a mock-up of the calendar circle at Nabta Playa. The, the mock-up is to the correct size, it's about 12 feet across, and the, these standing stones are very roughly to the, the size of the stones that were found there. Uh, the real circle, the stones are all a little bit different size, but they're roughly like this. And they're in the positions that we've laid them out here. And we've, we've marked the, the circular edge stones with these uh, uh, beach cobblestones. First, the obvious thing are these two gates or windows or sight lines on the edges of the circle. One, I'm standing on the north-south sight line window. I'm standing on the north end, looking south. The other sight line window is the uh, uh, northeast to southwest window. So you got these two windows. And it turns out that that one points very well to the summer solstice sunrise. So on summer solstice, you would see the sunrise. You could see through the uh, gate if you were actually watching it, or you could stand and watch the uh, shadows, marking it like a, a sun dagger, perhaps, uh, uh, showing the summer solstice sun rising through that gate. And this one you could call a meridian sight line window, the meridian being the north-south line. So what I wanted to determine was what's the meaning of those six standing stones in the center of the circle. And it turns out since we're thinking astronomically, if you just think of a possible star viewing diagram, there's something that fits really nicely with what those, those stones could mean. At the time that the calendar circle was used, about 6000 BC, at the day of the year, identified by the, the, the circle being the summer solstice sunrise, the, the summer solstice day, before sunrise, when, when the sky is still dark, if you're standing here, looking south on the meridian sight line window, you would have seen in the sky the three stars of Orion's belt in the location with the configuration and the angle 
designated by the star viewing diagram, by those three stones right there. And they match very well. They're at the right angle, they're at the right azimuth in the sky, and it's at the right time, just before summer solstice sunrise. So that's my uh, hypothesis, is that that's what those, those meaning of those three uh, stones is. And so you've got a window of applicability for when the circle applied to uh, uh, the, the meaning of, of those central stones. And that window of applicability is about 6,400 B.C. to about 4,900 B.C. And that window uh, uh, matches very well with the radiocarbon dates that were found uh, for the campfires and things that, in this location. So that's a very, very good match. Now, I wanted to consider what the other three stones were. Uh, and they're in a the configuration that makes you want to think of Orion's uh, uh, head and shoulders. There aren't that many three sets of three bright stars in a configuration like that in the sky. And uh, there's Orion's shoulder stars, the very bright Betelgeuse and Bellatrix, and uh, the head star Mesa, that, that, that makes you want to think that maybe that's what those are. But if you look on a star chart, or if you look in the sky, you see that when the Orion's belt stars were at this angle, at the correct angle matching the diagram, the shoulder stars of Orion were angled way off. They're angled way the other way, like that. So it doesn't match. That's not what you see, would have seen on, on the meridian. But considering further uh, whether that could be them, the, the second point is that the Orion's belt stars match not only during the radiocarbon date of the calendar circle and during the right time of, of year and the right time of day as designated by the sight line windows, but they're actually at an extremum. They're when the angle of their, their angle on the meridian is at its minimum throughout the whole 25,000 year precession cycle. Okay, so the angle at which you see a constellation in the sky on the meridian changes over the years due to the precession. And it goes, they go through a whole tilting cycle every 25,000 years, roughly. And so the Orion's belt stars match the viewing diagram very perfectly uh, in the window 6400 to 4900 BC when they're at their minimum tilt. So if we look at the, in the sky, as you would have seen, the, the shoulder stars of Orion, when the constellation was as its maximum tilt the other way, they would have matched this configuration in the star viewing diagram. So that's a hypothesis, is that's what all six of those central stones mean. The Orion's belt stars at uh, one extremum in the window of time 6400 to 4900 BC, and the shoulder and head star of Orion at the other extremum of the precession tilt uh, around 16,500 BC. You would have gone through a, a similar viewing sequence where you would have seen the shoulder and head star of Orion with that configuration on the meridian at the right place as seen in the, in the diagram and at the right time, this time as marking the winter solstice sunset rather than the summer solstice sunrise. So that's the hypothesis. Now we've got the meaning of all the six center stones uh, of the calendar circle, a uh, uh, good hypothesis for that. And there's other interesting things about this circle. If you plot, overplot the uh, constellation as it is in the sky with the map on, of the stones on the ground, they, the, the feet of Orion, when the head and shoulders match, are on the circle. And the Orion's upstretched uh, 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 bow arm is also on the circle. And when the belt stars match, you get another set of matching, uh, roughly the right size, except a bigger a bigger man figure. So there are many correspondences uh, corroborating that, that this could be the meaning of these six central stones.